out, so sing it with us. Okay, another part. Look, say victory, I got it. Oh, I'm so glad. I got it. Come on, say victory, I got it. I, I don't it. care what it looks like. Say victory, I got it. Oh, I'm so glad. I, got it. I believe I got victory, I got it. Oh, I'm so glad. I, got it. I know I got victory, I got it. I got victory. I got it. Oh, I'm so glad. 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 I got it.
yesterday, today, and forevermore. If you believe it, go ahead and stand to your feet. And somebody just shout, say, victory, I got it. I'm so glad I got it. Seconds. I, I want to hear that hallelujah, but instead of the at the end, you are the risen king, say you are enough for me. So a lot of times we feel like we need everything, but when we go into this new year, I want you to understand he is enough. God is enough, so just you are enough for me. Yes, 
Yes, you have, God. You've won the victory. Yes, you have, God. Yes, you have, God. still playing every head bowed and every eye closed surely God this is our anthem that you have won the victory and yes God we've lost some battles in 2020 we've lost some battles in 2021 we've lost some loved ones in 2020 we've lost some loved ones in 2021 but death couldn't hold you down you are the risen king over 2,000 years ago you rose you are seated in majesty God you are enough for me you are enough for them you are enough for those watching online and God we move into this new year believing that you are enough your grace is enough your peace is enough your anointing is enough your joy is enough your mercy is enough. Your love is enough. And for that, we give you glory. Now, God, I'm praying that you would hide me beneath the cross. That you would think through my mind, speak through my mouth. God, let it be all of you, less of me. Let the people be eternally touched and blessed. God, touch and reign on everyone as they've decided to make this the place that they would cross from 2021 into 2022. God, honor their decision, and we give you praise for it in Jesus' name. And everybody say, amen. Come on, can we say amen to Chris Taylor on drums? Give him a hand. Stephen Mitchell on the keys. Jocelyn Jimenez is background singer. And Kelly Merritt, background singer. Thank you. And you, we thank you for your voices. Amen. Amen. Would you, would you go ahead and just put the title up for me? And we'll get into the word of God. Somebody say, breathe again. Breathe again. Breathe again. Breathe again. Amen. As, uh, as I was thinking about that, the first thing that came to my mind, and some of you guys will recognize it, is a Tony Braxton song. Come on, y'all y'all know that y'all thought about that. Maybe, uh, maybe y'all more sanctified than I am. But I think it was penned by Babyface, an Indiana native, and talks about if, if I never felt love again, I don't know if I can ever breathe again. And I, I, as I thought about the difficulties of this new decade, the way it has come and the way COVID has lingered, who would have thought we'd be moving into 2022 still worried about masks and social distancing and vaccines or non-vaccines. And it, it's had the way of almost suffocating us, if we're honest, just, just the pressure, the pressure of a pandemic and stuff. Th this is what's interesting about a pandemic. I've never been through a pandemic before, but this is what's interesting about a pandemic. Life don't stop because the pandemic is here. Bills don't stop because the pandemic is here. Amen. So it was all that on top of everything else. And it, it has a way of 
literally almost choking the life out of you if you would allow it to. But I believe that we're going to be able to declare, I'm going to breathe again. Uh, this, this, this morning, this grief, the, this pain, these bills, this loneliness, this depression, this anxiety, it's having a way of suffocating me. This pandemic, the sickness, the, the disease, the trials, the issues. But I believe I'm going to breathe again. Somebody just, would you just inhale? And exhale and say, I'm going to breathe again. See, what we sometimes fail to understand that hidden in our daily life is our ability to breathe, to inhale and exhale oxygen. We can go through a lot of stuff, but if you lose your breath for too long, if you lose oxygen too long, you will eventually die. And yes, like George Floyd, the devil's had his neck on our throat and crushing us. But, but I'm going to breathe again. Oh, I feel my lungs filling up again. I don't know if any of you are swimmers, but when you swim, swim and, and you go underwater for a long period of time and you're trying to hold your breath, at some time you got to come up for air so you can breathe again. 2020, you was under the water. 2021, you were under the water. But I want you to believe that 2022, your head going to come up above the water and you're going to breathe again. Ah, I hope I'm not by myself. I'm going to breathe again. I'm going to be injected with life. I'm going to have something that lets me know I don't have to quit. I don't have to give up. You know why? Because I know the one who has won the victory. And I like all y'all, but he's won it all for me. And you like all of us, but you can make it personal. He won it all for me. So I'm going to breathe again. Yes, I'm going to breathe again. Let's, let's move into some scriptures. Y'all know I can't keep you too long because got, I got to get you out by, by 12 o'clock so that you can go and do whatever it is you're going to do. I'm not here to, I ain't here to judge you, but I ain't going to hold you too long. But let's, let's put this up. Let's, let's put up some uh, breathe synonyms. Inhale and exhale, but also... Be alive, be living, have life, instill, infuse, inject, impart. All those are part of breathing. Breathing is more than just inhaling and exhaling. It's being alive. There's a lot of people who are living, but they're dead. Now, we, we as Christians, we ought to be dead men walking, but some people are just dead, dead. They're dead to spirituality. They're dead to life. They're dead to enjoying things. I'm not going to live life not enjoying life. I'm going to smell the roses on my way to my journey. I, I'm going to live. I'm going to breathe. Yes, I've been through some stuff, but I'm still here, so I'm going to breathe. But in my inhale and exhaling and breathing and, and living and doing life, I'm also going to interject. I'm also going to actually impart. So here's the thing. When you have what they call CPR, which is, or mouth-to-mouth -mouth resuscitation, one person who has breath is able to inject breath into somebody else. And that's why Deliverance Temple, you can't stop breathing because somebody is going to need you to breathe for them. Somebody is going to need you to believe for them. That's why you can't stop praising. Somebody's going to need you to praise for them. And Muncie, Indiana, I declare to those watching online, you can count on the living simple to keep on breathing because we're going to breathe not just for us. We're going to breathe so we can impart life into somebody else. That's part of our job, so we can't give up. Let's, thinking of that, let's look at Genesis 2 and 7. Mother Mitchell, would, would you read that? And the Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life. And man became a living soul. <sighs> he breathed into man the breath of life. So he actually imparted life into us 
when he created. It said that we were created out of the dust of the ground. So we were not created out of mansions and gold. We were created out of just the lowest common denominator. But what makes us something is he, he breathed in us not just any breath, but the breath of life. Not halitosis breath, not Philly cheese, cheese steak breath, onion breath, but the breath of life. And the Bible says man became a living soul. The reason why you even have the emotions and the intellect and the reason and the imagination and the faculties that you have is because when God formed you, he breathed in you the breath of life. And when I say that something is attacking your breath, what I'm saying is attacking the God in you. The trials of life, the sin of life, the mistakes of life are designed to attack the life of God in you. But since God breathed in me, I'm going to breathe the breath of life. I'm going to remain a living soul. I'm about to come alive. Just like Frankenstein, the doctor worked on him and then he said, it's alive. It did what he didn't expect it to do. And I want the devil to look at me when I wake up in the morning and be afraid. He's alive again. He, he got up again. He, just like God raised Jesus from the dead. I, every time I get up, I want something to wake up inside of me. I want greatness to breathe in me. I want millionaire mindset to breathe in me. I want the entrepreneurial mindset to breathe in me. If you want to be a husband, I want the husband to breathe in me. I want the wife to breathe in me. I want the lawyer, the doctor to breathe in me. Whatever it is that's living inside of me, I don't want anything to die. I want it to breathe again. Don't go through all this hell and walk into 2022 and just give up. No. Allow what's in you to rise. Allow it to rise. We used to sing a song, let the glory of the Lord rise among us. I, I'm ready for it to rise among us, inside of us. It's our time to shine. It's our time to glow. And no, I can't promise you you won't have troubles in the next year, but I can promise you that the troubles won't stop the life of God inside of you. Whether you're in the building or not, whether you call yourself Christian or not, the Bible says, God breathed into every man the breath of life. So every man has the potential to function the way God ordained them to function. And it's our job to be the lifeline, to be the oxygen for men and women, boys and girls, all of humanity, to get that jolt of oxygen, to live again, to breathe again, to come alive to what God has destined for each and every one of us. I don't want you to live beneath your destiny. I don't want you to die in your sins. I want you to live again. And here's one of the reasons why. Let's, let's look at Psalms 150 and 6. Let everything that has breath praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. This was the final verse that I read on my journey of reading through the Bible in a year. So on the last uh, reading that I read, this was the final verse. Let everything that has breath praise the Lord. It didn't say let all the wealthy people, let all the pastors, let all the bishops, let all deliver. It says let everything that has breath praise the Lord. So if I was the devil, I'd be coming after your breath. Because if you have breath, you have the potential to praise the Lord. And since if I was the devil, since I got kicked out of heaven and I used to be over the praise, anybody that praises the Lord irritates me. So I got to come after your breath to make me feel better. But devil, I'm going to praise the Lord. I'm going to use this breath to praise the Lord. As for me in my house, we will serve the Lord. We will praise the Lord. We will breathe again. We will live again. We will rise again. Devil, you got up too late to take me out. I got too much breath in me. Got 
too much breath in me. If you know anything about the COVID disease, especially the Delta variant, one thing that's different about the Omicron variant, it doesn't attack the respiratory system the way the Delta variant does. And the Delta, Delta variant did. And what it designed to do was to rip you of your oxygen. And I'm not going to let you devil rip me of my oxygen. I'm going to breathe again. I'm going to breathe through the trouble and breathe through the trial. I'm going to breathe over the obstacle and over the mountain, but I'm going to breathe. I'm going to live. I'm like a Martin Luther King. I've seen the mountaintop, and I've seen the other side. We're free at last. Thank God Almighty. We're free at last. I got to breathe so I can see this freedom. I got to breathe so I can see this joy. I got to breathe so I can see this wealth. I got to breathe so I can see my family safe. I got to breathe so I can see this deliverance. I got to breathe because I've seen it. I've seen it. I got a glimpse of it and it ain't going down like this. We're not going to be crying forever. We're not going to be broke forever. And listen, this is not something new to y'all. I've been saying this all year long. We're not going to cry forever. We're not going to be lonely forever. We're not going to be sad forever. We're not going to be broke forever. We're not going to be sick forever. So we got to breathe so we can get to the other side. Here's something that, that you under, uh, have to understand. In the laws of the kingdom, let, let me come over on this side just for a minute. In the laws of the kingdom, the, the Bible says that a basically an unfair balance is an abomination to the Lord. And he was speaking of the way they would use their money system and how they would trick people by unbalancing things. He thought that was unjust, unjust. It was injustice. And God hated an unfair balance. But what that also means is when you've been in a season of negativity after negativity, God himself has to correct the course because he doesn't like an unfair balance. If you've had all positivity, God will allow some negativity to come in just to balance things out so you don't get the big head. But in these last years of this decade, we've been through so much negative, God got to show up because things are out of balance. We've been sick too long. We've been broke too long. We've been lonely too long. We've been hurting too long. We've been crying too long. So God's got to fix the scale. And so since I know he's going to fix the scales, I got to live long enough to see it. I got to stay around long enough to see it. Now, it may not come till my kids get 30, but I ain't going to die till they get it. It may not come. I'm not giving up to they get it. And when I, meet, when I say I'm not going to die, I'm not even just talking about on this side. If I cross from this side to the next side, I'm going to help you from the next side. One thing I know about my family, we lost both my grandmother and my father, great pillars in our family, our personal family. And many of y'all have lost things too. But one thing about my grandmother and my father, one thing I know, they ain't done working. When they got over there, they still working for us because we going to get what belongs to us through hell, through high water. God going to make a way. God going to make a way. Some, I know the Lord going to make a way somehow. Wow. So we got to continue to breathe. Let's, let, let, let's look at this next verse, Psalms 30 and 10. Hear, O Lord, and be merciful to me. O Lord, be my helper. It's okay for us to be honest, Brother Steve, and say we need some help. Hear me, O Lord, and be merciful to me. God, I need your mercy. I, I, I got to be honest, I can't go into 2022 like what we've been in. No, I mean, yeah, yeah, I can, but I don't want to. So, God, I need your mercy. I need your grace and your mercy. That's why I'm glad that surely goodness and mercy is following me. Because when I get in the new year, I need some stuff to go in my favor. So that's why I'm saying, help me, Lord. Help me, Lord. Fix it, Jesus. Help me, Lord. Fix it up, God. Work it out, God. God, I need your help. And here's something that you got to understand. The problem with us as humans, 
when things go right, we have a tendency to give ourselves the credit. But when things go wrong, we have a tendency to realize we need somebody helping us. So I'm so glad for the negativity because I know who I can turn to and I know who's going to help me. And how about you slap me in my face if I get blessed in 2022 and talk about it was me that did it. No, it was the help of the Lord. Remind me, it was the help of the almighty God. Somebody just say, say, help me, Lord. Help me, Lord. Help me, Lord. Help me, Lord. Fix me, Jesus. You know how. Lord, I'm out here on your word. All right, let's, let, let, let's look at that. I heard some baby saying that. Go on, baby, yeah. Let's look at verse 11. Here, here's what I, here's what I want, want us to focus on on this evening. You have turned for me my mourning into dancing. You have loosed my sackcloth and clothe me with gladness. Said, God, you've turned my mourning into dancing. The very thing that hurt me and grieved me and pained me and depressed me, you've turned it into the thing that I shouted over that I danced over. You gave me a reason to dance. And here, I need you to understand, there's going to be some dancing in 2022 that's going to bless your socks off and it's coming on the heels because of the devil trying to choke stuff out of you in 20 and 21, but you didn't die, you didn't quit, you didn't give up, but you pressed their way through. And guess what? It's dancing time. It's celebration time. Well, what are we celebrating for? I don't see nothing. God don't look like you're doing that. Don't wait till the battle is over. But shout right now because God specializes in turning your mourning into dancing. Now, I don't have any specific prophetic things that I can specifically and prophetically declare. But I have an inkling. So, so basically, I, I don't have a rhyme for you. Who God going to do in 2022? I don't have all that for you. I, I, I don't know what it's going to be. It could be more of the same. But I have an inkling that somewhere before the last service of 2022, there's going to be some dancing somewhere. Yeah. That, that, there's going to be something that's going to make you celebrate. Celebrate good times. Come on. Yeah. Now, we've dealt with bad times, but God's going to allow us to celebrate some good times. So there's going to be some good times coming on. I ain't talking about the TV show Good Times. Easy crater ripoff. I ain't talking about that keeping your head above water. Making a way if you can't. No, no. I ain't talking about your 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 uh, uh your, your light bill do everything. No, I'm talking about some blessings that's gonna allow you to relax and dance. I, I can't tell you what. I can't tell you when, I can't tell you how, but there's some dancing that's going to be happening. Hallelujah. And the dancing I'm talking about ain't all church dancing. Some of y'all, it's going to be wedding reception dancing. Some of y'all, it's going to be new job dancing. Some of y'all, it's going to be court winning dancing. The check came through dancing. The baby was born dancing. The loved one came out of the hospital dancing. There's going to be something to celebrate in this new year because you dare to breathe again. I'm fighting to breathe so I can see. Now, just like the wicked man, and he, he, did, get, he did get his due in 2021, but George Floyd was laying on the ground saying, I can't breathe, calling for his mama. And eight, almost nine minutes, the man just stayed on his neck. I don't blame Derek Chauvin 
as much as I blame the devil because I've been yelling at the devil. I'm tired of this addiction. And the devil stayed on my neck. Devil don't care nothing about you. But listen, I, I, I'm kind of like the old wrestlers. Back in the day, the old wrestlers, they'd be down on the ground. And Hulk Hogan would be down, but then he would start shaking. I, I'm like that. I feel a shaking. I feel a rumbling down in my spirit. Devil, you still got your foot on my neck, but you can't press it much longer. I feel a shaking. I feel a rumbling. And, and like the preacher said, I feel my help coming. I feel the anointing coming. I feel angels coming. I feel power coming. I feel peace coming. I feel joy coming. I feel fire coming. I'm not going to die. Devil, get up off my neck. Debt, get off of my neck. Depression, get off of my neck. Addiction, get off of my neck. I got to breathe because I got some dancing to be doing. I got something to dance about. I got something to praise God about. I got something to give God glory about. He's going to turn my morning into dancing. So if I was you, I'd practice my dance right now. Just in case. I, I'd go try on some wedding dresses just in case. I'd walk to the car lot just in case. I'd go grab some, some books for houses just in case. I'd put in another resume just in case. I'd get my hair done just in case. I'd get my beard trimmed just in case. I'll go to the mall just in case that he turns my morning into dancing. You ought to give God some praise. Get ready, get ready. Get ready to dance. 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 Because if anybody can do it, God can. If anybody can turn it around, God can. If anybody can fix it, God can. Won't he do it? Yes, he will. Won't he work it out? Yes, he will. I know a God that has all power in his hand. Come on, give God a praise. How about you say, do it for me, God. 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 I'm ready to dance. 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 Not, not only does he turn our mourning into dancing, but he gives us beauty for ashes. He gives us the oil of joy for mourning. So what it seems to suggest is the more you've been through, the greater the breakthrough. Okay, I just because just y'all don't feel like y'all had church unless I rhyme. Breakthrough in 2022. The more I've been through, the more God going to break through. Whew. I might not even look the same next year. Listen, let, 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 let me get real practical, y'all. Y'all can keep on staying on, on, on the music, but let me get real practical. Practical. Some of y'all may not look the same next year. What do you mean? You might feel like getting surgery. Get some nick, tuck, cut. It don't make a difference. Whatever you got to do, do what you got to do. It, it, it don't make a difference. God will bless you to do it however you want to do it because it's time to dance. It's dancing time. Oh, I'm putting my dancing shoes on. I'm putting my joy shoes on. I'm putting my praise clothes on because it's time to praise the Lord. Now, now in the Bible times, they dressed according to the season they were in. The Bible talks they were put on sackcloth and ashes. When they were in a grieving time, they would put on things that were aligned with the grieving. But when Lazarus came up out of the grave, Jesus said, loose him and let him go. Take the grave clothes off. 
Take that pandemic mindset off. Take that bipolar mindset off. Pull that broke mindset off. Pull that sick attitude off. You got to change your clothes. What I have understood about both DC and Marvel, Superman, when he's Clark Kent, he's always Clark Kent. But when he's Superman, he changes his clothes first. Peter Parker is always Peter Parker. But when he wants to be Spider-Man, he changes his clothes. I'm getting ready to change my clothes faster than a speeding bullet. I'm getting ready to change my clothes. I got some work to do, so I got to change my clothes. I got to breathe again. So God can do it. We've, we've, we've been through enough for us to say enough is enough. I'm getting ready to praise the Lord. Let's look at verse 12. That my glory may sing your praise and not be silent. Hold on, hold on. God understands something. God says, I'm turning your mourning into dancing so that you can properly praise me. See, we bring the sacrifice of praise, which means we praise even when it's a sacrifice. And I, I, I've done that. I've been there where I've had to praise while I was hurting. I've had to preach this year. I had to preach while I was hurting. It, it, that, that, there's nothing easy about that. But it's more proper to praise because you're happy. And praise because you're dancing. So God said, I'm turning your mourning into dancing so that when you praise me, your praise is going to be a little bit easier. I'm glad you praised me when you were hurting, but I can't leave you hurting forever. Because when you lift your hands the next time, I want you to lift your hands not because you got in church. I want you to lift your hands because God's been so good. That when you get out of the bed, God is already blessing you. Blessings are overtaking you and running you down. I can't hardly get my head up above the blessings. Not above the water, but above the blessings. Somebody going to walk into something that's going to blow your mind. Generational wealth is about to hit somebody generational therapy, healing. Somebody going to get healed in your family and shift your whole family. Next time you dance, you're going to be dancing for real. Now, if I see in the Star Press that somebody was dancing on Megalia, I'm going to already know it was a deliverance temple person because you done got happy and had to dance in the street. Dancing in the streets. Because what God has done. All right, let's, let's, let's continue to read. Let's look at, uh, we're going to switch just for a second. Let's read the whole part of Psalms 30 to 12, and then we'll make a switch. That my glory may sing your praise and not be silent. I don't want to be silent. Oh, Lord, my God, I will give thanks to you forever. I love you forever. I love you. We're going to start saying, I'll praise you forever. Lord. Yeah, yeah. It's going to be in our spirit because God is turning things in our favor. Now, let, let, let me pause and be honest. I didn't say this a whole bunch of times. I done told you a whole bunch of times that God is working in your favor. Oh, but I feel it. Now, it's not that I haven't felt it before, but I still feel it. It's it's, it's not a magic potion. It's not like you're going to walk in next year when you walk out these doors and everything's going to be great. No, you, you still have to live life. But I want you to understand that you're moving towards something. Every day, deliverance temple, every day, people are online, you're moving to something that's going to let your haters know why you keep trusting in God. Because sometimes it looks like, like Joe's wife. Why don't you just curse God, Sister Trish, and die? Brother Allen, just let it go and die. Just quit. Just roll over and die. No, 
no, no, no, no, no, no. Because if I roll over and die, I know who else is going to roll over. Bishop Royce Mitchell is going to roll over in his grave because he didn't build no quitters. He didn't build no dyers. He built people that are going to leap through troops and run, leap over walls and run through troops. We got to keep pressing because we got to see the thing that God promised. And of course, it's not all material. Sometimes it is material. Sometimes it's emotional. Sometimes it's physical. But whatever it is, I want it. Because what God has for me, it is for me. And what God has for you, it is for you. And you ought to get to the place where I'm mad when I don't get what belongs to me. Now, I'm not going to have an attitude with God, but I will have an attitude with that old snoo foot, ugly, ratchet, snaggle devil, devil. Him and his mama, his daddy, his cousins, and his food stamps. Everything he got, I'm sick of him, and I'm going to get some blessings so I can laugh in his face. I'm not trying to laugh at my haters. I'm trying to laugh in the devil's face and say, God came through for me. And guess what else, saints? I don't have to be the first one to get it, to get happy. Y'all can get it first, and I'm going to be happy. Because I know God's in the neighborhood. If he bless my pew mate, he might bless me next. I, I don't care who get it first. I'm just ready to dance. I don't care which one of your loved ones gets saved next. I'm just ready for us to have a celebration about what God is doing. All right, let's, let's look at John 20 and 19. For the last several watch night services, I've been in 2019, 2020, and 2021, I've been preaching from John 20 because of 2019, 2020, and 2021. And when I preached it, I didn't realize the relevance of it other than I felt like that's what God told me to share. So now we're going to go revisit it. Let's look at 2019. Would you read that? Then the same day at evening, being the first day of the week, when the doors were shut, where the disciples were assembled for fear of the Jews, came Jesus and stood in the midst and saith unto them, Peace be unto you. It talks about how after Jesus had died, they were gathered together, and then Jesus just comes in. He was in his other body, his resurrected body, so he actually appeared through the doors, and he said, Peace. So I preached in 2019 peace because I didn't know what we were moving into. I didn't know we were moving into a season that if we didn't have peace, we would lose our minds. Let's look at verse 20. And when he had, said, had so said, he showed unto them his hands and his side. Then were the disciples glad when they saw the Lord. He showed them what he suffered. And don't you understand that when 2020 hit, we all suffered. The entire globe suffered. But what Jesus did, he showed you, I came through the suffering and I got the scars to prove it. And some of y'all got the scars of what you went through when this new decade hit, but you still here. You still standing. I'm, I'm scarred, but I'm still here. I'm broken, but I'm still here. I got hurt, but I'm still here. I lost my job, but I'm still here. I got COVID, but I'm still here. I got divorced, but I'm still here. They lied on me, but I'm still here. They talked about me, but I'm still here. They tried to fire me, but I'm still here. I was addicted, but I'm still here. I was depressed, but I'm still here. Look, look at the scars. Saints, what you got to understand Sometimes the people out there, they don't want to hear about your blessing. They want you to show them your scars. Well, we got some scars. We done been through some stuff, and we're still here. All right, let's look at that. Let's look at the next verse. Verse 21. Jesus said to them again, peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, even so I am sending you. So last year in 2021, I preached about peace again. Because he said it at the beginning in 19, and then he said it in 2021. He said, I'm saying again, peace. I didn't understand what God was preparing us for. He said, what y'all going to face in these next three years? You're going to need some peace. Because it's about to come at you hard. It's about to come at you fast. And I had no idea how hard and fast and personal it would come.
all. But guess what? I still got my peace. Yeah. I, I, I still, I, I, I should be crazy. You should be crazy. You, you, you should have lost your mind. You, you, you should be addicted to pills, but somehow you got a peace that passes all understanding because you got a God that will step in your situation and declare peace in the middle of your storm. What's always interesting, he doesn't always fix the storm, but he will always adjust the peace. Not for y'all, but y'all online, somebody need to tweet that right now. He may not always fix the storm. But he will always adjust your peace. That way, when your peace is adjusted, you can handle any storm. Yes. Let, let, me, let me say it this way. He may not fix the storm, but he'll enlarge your umbrella. Yes, <laughs> so that when the storm comes, you still are protected. I've been in a pandemic, but I'm still protected. Yes. I've been in an economic downturn, but I still had money. I, I somehow still got blessed when things went down. I still had a good marriage when things down, went down. My church still grew when we shut the doors. I still was anointed when I had to go under. I'm okay because I have peace. Hallelujah. Just, just one simple thing. We got ready to go on vacation, to go to Las Vegas in March. And the Sunday before... My son has all kinds of pains, and next thing you know, he's rushed to the emergency room, told me they're going to have to take out his appendix. And we all we tried to do was just enjoy a vacation. And here we are trying to figure out what's going on with our son because stuff keeps coming at him. But guess what? My son's okay because we got peace. And that's just one of the things that we've gone through. I've been going through stuff all year long, but I still got peace. And don't let me lie to you. All of it hasn't been bad. All of it haven't been rough. God been blessing me in the middle of it. God been blessing you in the middle of it. You going to be okay in this next year because God's peace is going with you. And God's peace has gone ahead of you. So now that leads us to 2022. We're not going to put the verse up. But I had to go back to this chapter to be reminded what it says. Of course, I had read it before, and I read it last year, but I needed to say what it said so I would know what to uh, tell you for this year, what, what to tell you to go into 22 with. So, God, what are you going to say? So, I'm not for sure what the scripture said, not for sure what it was going to be, but then I read it, and I knew what it was that God was trying to say to us. Let's put up 2022. And when he had said this, he breathed on them and said unto them, Receive ye the Holy Ghost. Hold on. First, he told them to have peace. And then he gave them peace. But basically he was saying that ain't enough to get you through what you need to go through. So let me breathe on you. So when I say breathe again, you may have thought I was saying you need to breathe your breath. But the same one who put breath in your body is about to give you another breath so that you can make it in this new year. You're about to be breathing borrowed breath. A breath from Jesus. He's about to breathe on you. He's about to fill your lungs with something new. I know you thought you was tired. I know you thought you couldn't do it again. I know you thought you couldn't face another year. But God said, don't worry. I'm about to breathe on you. I'm about to blow on you. I'm about to put something inside of you. I'm about to give you something that's going to carry you through. I'm about to breathe the breath of life. I'm about to breathe the breath of wealth. I'm about to breathe the breath of joy. I'm about to breathe the breath of peace. I'm about to breathe the breath of power. I'm about to breathe the breath of anointing. Take this breath. Take this joy. Take this peace. I'm about to breathe on you. Somebody just don't exhale, just inhale. Woo, that was the breath of the Lord. Do it again. Oh, that was the breath of God. I'm about to get drunk in the spirit. I feel the breath of the Lord. Let, let, let's go back to the scripture again. Let's put it back up. Got about 13 minutes. Re, re, read it again. And when he had said this, he breathed on them and said unto them, Receive ye the Holy Ghost. Hold on. Hold on. 
Hold on just a second. Breathe and receive. Go ahead, put that up so they can see it. I, I, I got that. Breathe and receive. In 2022, you're not going to have to do. You're just going to have to receive. Because God's going to do the doing for you because he's going to breathe, but all you got to do is receive. The reason why I can guarantee I'm going to breathe again is because I'm going to receive the breath from the breather, and I'm going to allow him to breathe in me, and I'm just going to receive again. God, if you can use anybody, you can use me. I lift my hands and I receive. Remember, we talked about the gift. I'm getting ready to receive from the receiver. And let me just do this real quick. Let me throw it up and let me just catch it. You about to catch some blessings. You, you about to catch some anointing. You, you about to catch some power. God is dropping some stuff your way. And all you got to do is receive. Somebody say, bring it on, bring it on, bring it, bring it. Bring it on, God. Bring it on, God. Bring it on, God. Bring it on. Bring it on, God. Bring it. Bring it. I'm ready to receive. If you're ready to receive, why don't you say, I'm ready, I'm ready, I'm ready. Oh. Oh, yeah, I'm ready. I'm ready. Bishop T.D. Jakes used to prophetically say, get ready. But we about to declare, I'm ready. I've been ready. I'm past ready. I'm so ready. I'm readier than ready can be. And I'm ready to receive. I'm ready to accept. I'm ready to take. I'm ready to move. I'm ready to dance. I'm ready to have everything that God said I can have. God, you do the breathing, and God, I'll do the receiving. Say that. Say, God, you do the breathing. I'll do the receiving. In other words, 2022 is the year that God's going to do CPR on you. He's going to breathe through you and breathe for you when you can't do it yourself. Now, this is something that I've been dealing with almost ever since my father passed. It's actually going a step backwards for me. I wrote a book about God loves me, but I've been almost slipping back into the idea that I got to work for God, that maybe I'm not good enough, maybe I'm not doing enough, maybe I'm not preaching hard enough, I'm not, just, just, just almost being tormented in the mind, like God, if I'm not doing enough, and I told you, I said, God, I'll, I'll stop pastoring, I'll stop preaching, I'll walk away, get a church to somebody else, God, it, God, it, am I messing it up, am I, cause yes, I have some, some issues, I'm not perfect, so I'm like, God, is it me, and God just kept saying, you're only human. I'm like, and now is that my flesh talking or God is that you talking? Because I don't want to just be leaning to my flesh and say I'm only human. But what God is trying to say, I'm not asking you to do it all, Andre. There's some stuff I just want to breathe on you and get it done. I'm not asking for all your scriptures and all your giving and all your fasting and all your speaking in tongues, even though all that's good. It's not that you're not enough. I am enough. That's why I asked the singers to say, you are enough for me because you're going to do the breathing. So sometimes God will do that when he gets ready to bless so that you don't think that your works is what God had done. No, it wasn't your works. It was you receiving. Guess what? I know you done messed up in 2021 just like the rest of us. I know you done messed up in 2020. You've been messing up since 2000. I understand that. We didn't all had some hiccups, some, some, some backsliding, some slips, some dips, been in the back, in the booth, in the dark, doing what shouldn't have been doing. We didn't all done done some of that somewhere in our life. Ain't nobody perfect in this place. Hold on, real quick. Let all the perfect people stand up. Okay, well, let me go sit down then. Okay, ain't nobody standing, so we all in the same boat. So God said, I don't need your perfection because I'm going to do the breathing. See, I'm perfect, so you don't have to be perfect, but you do have to trust my perfection and let me breathe my perfection into your life and then line your life up to what I've already breathed. So just receive what God is doing. 
I need you to receive it. Say, I receive it. I receive it. I believe and I receive. All right, let's go to, let's go to the next thing. I'm, I'm going to give you synonyms for receiving. Be given. Be presented with. Be awarded. Collect. Accept. Have conferred on one. Get. Obtain. Gain. Acquire. Secure. In 2022, you're going to be given some stuff. You're going to be presented with some stuff. And it ain't all material. It's going to be whatever it is you need. You're about to be awarded some stuff. You're about to collect. Some of y'all folk been owing you forever. And it's collection time. It's accepting time. Because you're about to be promoted. You're going to accept it. You're about to have some stuff conferred on you. You're about to get, obtain, gain, acquire, secure. And all you have to do is receive. Come on, clap your hands if you want to receive. I'm ready to receive. But I, I want to go back up to 2022 because there was something that I left out. And I'll go ahead and read it. Put verse 2022 up. This is the year we're going into. And when he had said this, he breathed on them and saith unto them, receive. But not just receive anything. But receive ye the Holy Ghost. In other words, when I say you're about to get something, you're not necessarily going to get a Cadillac, but you're going to get more of the spirit that can produce the Cadillac that you need. It's not that you're just going to get a man, but you're going to get more of the spirit so you know which man to choose when the man comes. So when you receive, you about to receive not Casper the friendly ghost, but the Holy Ghost. With a mighty burning fire. The Holy Ghost that'll make you act right. The Holy Ghost that'll make you talk right. The Holy Ghost that'll make you think right. The Holy Ghost that'll make you feel right. The Holy Ghost that'll shake your hands and, and make you have a dip in your, uh, in your step and a pep in your step. Some of y'all gonna feel what you never felt before because you're about to be filled afresh with the Holy Ghost and with power, power from on high. Power, power, wonder, work, and power in the blood of of the Lamb, and all you got to do is receive it. So, here's one of the things that I've understood as, as we're coming to a close. One of the things that I've noticed, I'm not one to judge people. I try to have non-judgmental eyes. But the one area that I have really, not necessarily judging, but the scripture says we can have righteous judgment. The one area that I've been seeing judgment from my vantage point is not the streets, not the world. I ain't bothered by folk and they high, they drinking all that. I love those people and I can't wait for them to come into church. That, I don't have issue with that. But I've been seeing churches, specifically churches going online because now everything's online and ain't nary a drop of power in these churches. Here, here's the thing. When you're not anointed, you have to succumb to entertainment. And you start turning on stuff. I'm not talking about some of the big name people because some of those you still find power and anointing. But just, 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 just look around the spectrum of church and you'll see there's not a lot of power. There's a lot of stuff. There's a lot of tradition. But there's not a lot of power. And God has been shaking the church so the real gets separated from the fake. And what's going to happen, people are going to realize I've been in a lifeless church. I've been in a powerless church. I've been in a traditional church. And I want to go somewhere where the Holy Ghost resides. I want to go to a place that even when the doors are locked, I can drive up on the parking lot and I can feel the presence of the Holy Ghost. And I'm not here 
to say we're the greatest place in the world. We got issues like everybody else, but I can guarantee you one thing. That Holy Ghost lives in this place. He lives on the parking lot. He lives on the grounds. He, he lives in the carpet. He, he lives in the pews. He lives in the microphones, in the cameras. And the Holy Ghost is coming to shake up Deliverance Temple, not to bring us lower, but to take us higher because we got some stuff we need to do and we got to do it with the Holy Ghost power. Let me... Let me be like a lot of run around my house. Holy Spirit, activate. Holy Spirit, activate. Holy Spirit, activate. Holy Spirit, activate. I'm ready to receive more of the Holy Spirit and the Holy Ghost. So let's read this final verse. This is how we'll close. Zechariah 4 and 6. Then he answered and spake unto me, saying, this is... Hold on. He answered and spake to me, saying, I'm going to paraphrase a little. This is how it's going to get done in 2022. Not by Pastor Andre, not by him reading the Bible every year, not by all the stuff he's done, not by the music, not by the cameras. How is it going to get done? Read. This is the word of the Lord unto Zerubbabel, saying, not by might, Woo! nor by power. Woo! But by my spirit, saith the Lord of hosts. Not by the Republicans, not by the Democrats, but by my spirit, saith the Lord. Not by Paul Memorial, not by General Motors, but by my spirit, saith the Lord. Not by Toyota, not by Honda, not by Cadillac, but by my spirit, saith the Lord. God gonna do it by his spirit. So receive it. Receive it. You don't have to do it. Not by Jonathan. Not by Stephen. Not by Andre. But by the Spirit. Not by Devin. Not by Traylon. But by the Spirit. Say the Lord. Stand to your feet. Woo, I feel something. All right. Put this last point up. And this is what we will say. This is what I'll say to you. I'll, I'll say it over you. You will breathe again in 2022 because you will receive again. But it won't be by your own energy. It will be by God's spirit. Come on, clap your hands. Would you start the timer in the back?